it's the next level. Mark, this is good news. We can finally do what we were meant to do, be who we were meant to be. You lied to me. You couldn't know the truth. Not until you had your powers. Not until I was sure. Sure of what? Sure you were a Viltrumite. Hey, panelers, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Jamie. And this is going to be a spoiler full podcast about episode eight, the finale of Amazon Prime series Invincible, which was created by Robert Kirkman, which was adapted from his comic Invincible and turned into anime. So if you not watch this episode, please stop, go back, watch it, come back, listen to us, and then go forward. So with that, we're covering Invincible Season 1, Episode 8, which is the finale, Where I Really Came From. And the synopsis for this particular episode is, Mark must prove he's become the hero he's always wanted to be by stopping an unstoppable force. So, yeah, that being his father. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And with that, we're just going to move right into our initial thoughts, as we always do. So, Jamie, what was your thoughts? Thought it was an amazing episode, perfect way to end the season. And I mean, how do you not love an episode that starts with blood and viscera raining from the sky? Yeah, oh, there was so much. There was so I much so blood, much. action, and carnage in this episode, <gasps> and it was just pretty much Omni Man and, and Mark. You know, Nolan and Mark beating the hell out of each other, Oof. and the tragedies of said violence too, because we see the outcome within it and it's not really the visual or physical gore that we're seeing of the tragedy but also of what happens to debbie cecil everybody else that are involved and it's it was very it was written very very well and it was portrayed very very well because what you can all, there's only so much you could do with an anime with like facial features as far as emotion so i, I think it worked out I, they did a beautiful job portraying emotions definitely and I thought it was great as well as a whole, you know, season ender. And the action, you know, the heart was there within it. So the whole battle scene with uh, Nolan and Mark, like I stated, the drama within, and then the heart at the very end of the episode, I really, really loved where Amber, William, and Eve come together for Mark. And they sit yeah. with them. So it's not like he just has Debbie and he has no other family. He has family. So we see that at the very end. And that's that's what I really appreciated it at, at the end. Wow. So, yeah, this was really good. I really enjoyed it. And uh, it sets us up for another two seasons, which... <laughs> so excited. <laughs> which we'll uh, talk about later on. So with that, we'll move right into our top five or highlights of Invincible Season 1, Episode 8. Where I came from here. Why did you make me do this? You're fighting so you can watch everyone around you die. Think, Mark. You'll outlast every fragile, insignificant being on this planet. You'll live to see this world crumble to dust and blow away. Everyone and everything you know will be gone. And you're number five? Number five is Omni Man is an ass. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he is. <laughs> I mean, we finally found out what he was up to, and screw him. Um, <laughs> I have to admit, I was totally wrong. He wasn't possessed. He's just a jerk. Yep. He waited until his, he found out if his son had powers to take out the Guardians, which yeah was the trigger for taking them out because now he and his son could take over and. I wonder, like, obviously that's been in play for at least 17 years, but I wonder how much longer he's had that. Like, if that was a plan the whole time was come here, create a son, mm -hmm. and then take over. And that's why he had to pretend he was a good guy and helping people up until then. Mm. Yeah, because it, like, it wasn't. It, and if you look at the very first episode, that is really when it all takes place. And, yeah. and it answers. That was the key answer to this. Mark got his powers. 
and he was able to spawn on this earth to have something where he has somebody else to take over. Because as we know, and this is part of my number five, where we find out the truth, and Viltramite is a crazy pants place. Well, that pile of bodies was insane. Yes, they they just, like, they, <laughs> they had to pick out the weak, so they ruined half their culture, so that they only had the strength of the strong people that are out there to go out there to prepare to gather these planets for themselves and take over this galaxy as an empire. It's kind of like the Empire from Empire Strikes Back. But in yeah. this case, it's a particular race. And we find out at the very end that, you know, that they should have been warned already. Uh, you know, that one guy that we found out that uh, Seth Rogen plays. And the fact that we get all these answers now, if you came in fresh like we did, you wouldn't have predicted any of this. This we, You know, you and I thought that he was being controlled in some way. He was, yeah. And then we kind of thought it was verbally manipulation, like somebody had something on him. But the key was of Mark obtaining his powers. And then, you know, Nolan's figuring that's like, oh, okay, I've already created another one. So I'll utilize that and we'll take over this world. And Mark did not see that, and that's where everything progresses within this episode. I mean, calling Debbie a pet, like, we thought, like, oh, look how yeah. cute their love is and all that. And he calls her a pet? Like, seriously, big giant middle finger to him. Exactly. <laughs> Plus, you know, you did see some emotion within him at the very end during the yeah. montage of when he saw Mark growing up and he was looking at Debbie. And then I guess he felt something. I think that is the root and the reason why he flew off the way he did. Yeah, I think so, too. I think he... There's a trickle of humanity in there that, that was in his Viltramite being that he just couldn't ignore. And that was the whole reason. And it's I think it that was a result of what Mark had to say at the very end of, like, after 500 years, where will you be? Who will you be with? And I mean, his, him stating, I'll, I'll have you, Dad. And it, oh, that was it was so heart wrenching. Oh god, that was amazing. Yeah, even after being beaten like so like that by his no dad, no teeth, no nothing. Oof. And watching him, watching his dad kill all of those people mm -hmm. just to make a point to Mark, and utilizing Mark to kill those people too. At one point, yeah. oh, that scene was like oof. And Mark was still like, "But I love you, Dad." Yeah, yeah. It, it shows. You know, Mark's strength more than anything. It shows Mark's humanity more than anything, too. Yeah. So that was your number five? And my yep. number five, actually. <laughs> so <laughs> that worked out well. Uh, your number four? Number four is William. He is still my absolute favorite character. <laughs> he was, like, the only comic relief we got to, like, li to lighten up the episode mm. a little bit. Because it was heavy. And, I mean, he's just so awkward and adorable and... Also straightforward. Yeah. And a good friend. Yeah, always a good friend. I, I do appreciate William. He's so quirky and fun. Well, my number four would be the action and the carnage. <laughs> <laughs> so much carnage. <laughs> Definitely the fights, the, all the fight scenes between Omni-Man and, and Invincible. Mark just continues to help out within the fight, especially with the pilot. But Nolan just comes down and crushes the pilot's head to prove that another point. It was so cruel and so, whoa. And he goes, all this effort for what? And squish. <sighs> the destruction within the city from Mark being punched so hard that he blasts through a bunch of cars, destroys the streets and buildings as well. And you could see people are getting killed within that scene itself. He tries to save the mother and the daughter, but all is left is the mother's arm in the end. Um, oh. He just picks it up and it's just like you could see the horror in his face. Then that train car where Mark where, you know, Nolan's got him, and he faces him f towards the train as it's approaching, and something kind of a reverse of, like, a Spider-Man 2 when Peter's on the front of the train trying to stop it. Mark is being pushed through the train, through everybody, destroying him, and his eyes are seeing as people are being splatted because of him, because he's impenetrable, and Nolan just loving the idea just to make a point. And through that subway car, it was the gore in that alone, but the <sighs> horror in it, 
and you could see the pain. And to see that in an anime, that was done very well. Yeah, cause, I mean, you know I love gore, but that one, that was tough to watch. Oh, yeah. And it was supposed to be tough to watch. Like, they did it beautifully. Yes. But, yeah, that was That's a credit to the anime insane. department that's there, because literally, <laughs> if you think about it, the actors are just voiceovers to portray all that emotion on film in anime form is very hard to do. So kudos to them for doing that. And one other thing on that note, the punch. Like how that punch went from the countryside all the way into the middle of the city. Yes. Yeah. That was insane. It just launches him that far with that power. That shows you how much no one has that power. But Mark is still learning how to use yeah. his power too. So he's not at the same equivalent as him, which Cecil thought, oh, he could take Nolan. But he barely did, if you think about it. At the very end, the reason why he lived is because Nolan couldn't really proceed because that shred of humanity that was within him. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, Omni-Man could have gotten rid of him if he didn't all of a sudden find a little piece of heart. Yeah. He's like the Tin Man. We had to look for his heart. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that maybe he's went off to see the wizard. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> maybe somebody will punch some life into him, at least. <laughs> You're number three. The Guardians are now a team. Yeah. Like a true, real deal team. Mm -hmm. I loved like they're watching Omni Man go absolutely berserk and they're like, no, we have to help. Like Omni and we didn't know at the time when they left what they were going to do to help, but like Omni Man could have killed them. Yeah. Like they were watching that, they knew for a fact he could have killed and them. And Cecil was holding them back for a reason. Basically, if you think about it, it was cleanup. It yeah. was they were just trying to help out everybody through the carnage at the very end. Uh there was a cool scene between Rex and Black Samson that I enjoyed. The washing of the blood. The washing of the blood. And that was because so we're not ready cool. yet. And and when they all come to Rex's aid after Samson grabbed Rex's arm very sternly, like an adult to a child, but then they come to and he goes, I guess we're a team. And that's that's really what it boiled down to, is that they're there for each other's backs, no matter what. Yeah, and they like they went in and helped. It, you know, it was showing them help. It reminded me like the Mister Rogers look for the helpers. Yeah, thing. You know, when something goes bad, because we just watched all this horribleness happen, and then we got to see a little bit of hope. Yeah, that's that's the benefit behind that is that there is hope, and they have a new team. I'm hoping now with Robot being new, <laughs> they're able <laughs> to come together completely. Hopefully, by next season, we see uh, Monster Girl not revert back even lower to a point where she'll be a baby in right? diapers with a monster <laughs> symptom. <laughs> so one thing I thought was really interesting when they did, you know, they went to the training images of them mm -hmm. is like, it showed them, it showed them working as a team, mm -hmm. but it also showed that how they could each defend against each other. That way, one of them, if one of them goes rogue, exactly, they're set to take care of it. Like the Batman contingency thing that they do for Superman. <laughs> I know exactly. your powers enough to take you down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, because they weren't just battling and training; they were defending against each other too. Yes, and doing a fantastic job of it, which was cool. Uh, that was your number three. That was my number three. Oh, well, mine would be Omni Man's determination. So. We see throughout the fight that Omni-Man is determined to do his job and conquer the Earth for Viltrum through his talking to Mark and trying to convert him, like, to his ways. But, you know, he just kept speaking down about Earth and how the Earth needs to bow to them. You can see that Viltrum thinks of planets like Earth with the ideology of conquering worlds and how Nulan was pretty much converted to their ways. He had that ingrained in his brain. And that's, that was his determination. And his idea was to convert his son. There was no way of that happening within this episode. Mark was not going to be converted because he is half, half human. Come on. He's going to, he grew up on that planet. So what were you thinking of raising him as a human? He's not going to have that information right away. Right. Even though you're telling them, oh, you'll get your powers, you'll get your powers, a real Viltrum will, you know, eventually they gain them at age whatever, and you're just a little late bloomer. But you didn't institute or put that thought of how Viltrum was in your kid, because you're not on Viltrum. Your wife is human. Regardless if you see her as a pet, 
they are humans. So obviously there was love there. Literally, there yeah. had to be love. There was no reason for him to say, oh, I'm just going to shack up with this chick and have a baby and we'll be married. And then eventually, you know, I'll just have to kill her. And I don't think and that. He protect, I mean, he protected the earth. I mean, granted to be taken over, but still he protected the people. Exactly. From all these events. Yeah. And it just out of the blue, as soon as Mark achieved those powers, that's when, in, you know, it just kicks in. He has to do what he was sent there to do. And then I guess he realizes he's in turmoil because of, I don't think his little uh, lunch day with Debbie when the big monster approached was necessarily a way to keep her distant or continuing to lie to her. I think there was some sort of emotion there for him. He did care and he wanted I something agree. to work, but it, it got to that point where he saw the deceit in her where he had to go full Viltrum and go crazy because she found out what he was doing, why he was hiding the bloodied uniform, why he killed those people and got that information from the suit maker. And then that's when he felt he lost trust completely and it had to go forth. And the only person that he could rely on was Mark. But that didn't work out either because Mark is an individual. He's, he's growing and he has love. He's still half human. But that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> You're number two. The what are you going to do now montage. Oh. Uh, At the end. They found a way to hit on all of the storylines that they left open mm -hmm. in the previous episodes. And like they even had the aliens. I, the Mars aliens <laughs> yeah. that I was obsessed with. Yeah. They even had those. I was so excited. Yep. Um and they had Titan like what was that thing that came into Titan's office? That looked pretty cool. It was like it was a guy, and then all of a sudden, it was like this dragon coming at him. Oh, Ooh. yeah. That's something we've never seen before. And yeah. uh, I'm waiting to see that. We got to see the lion head dude. <laughs> yeah, we got Battle Beast. Battle Beast. We got to, yeah. Yeah. And he's still crazy. Yep. And then, um, and most importantly, we got to see the Cyberman army. I'm still calling them Cybermen. Um, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Because because we are going to need them when, the, when either Omni-Man or his people come back. We are definitely going to need those Cybermen because that's going to be insane. But And the song that played over it, I hate to say I told you so, was, just, again, perfect song. Yeah. Like, they, they've been hitting, does the score. Yeah, they've been hitting out at a park, and it's not like these are songs made for the show. They were picked right. specifically for specific scenes, and they're in pop culture. So it works out. So it, it does attract us to the scene because we've heard these songs so many times before. So it worked out for the scene, too. Yeah, I agree. And that was it? Yep, oh. that was it. Ah, cool. Mine would be Mark's fortitude to do what was right. Regardless of the truth and Nolan's persistence in the attacking and trying to destroy Mark, who is invincible, Mark was so strong and determined to get Nolan to listen and show some sort of humanity within him. He kept talking to him as they were battling, trying to make sense, trying to bring out the humanity in Nolan that Mark thinks is still there. But it took a conversation of how Mark would be within years when after everything is done and others he cared for or loved for are gone. Mark's thought that he would still have his father. Nolan saw flashes of Mark's life as he saw him as he was pounding the hell out of his face during that the baseball game and everything else of him growing up to the point of him obtaining his powers. Then realizes after what Mark stated about having him still and then just flies off. You could see the how exhausted he is because he collapses right next to Mark and then has that look and you could see it. And it, like I said, this is a credit to the animators of getting the visuals. You know, it's very hard to do yeah. with certain animation and cartoon to get that and the way this is drawn it's almost in a sense of some of the old traditional but very much almost the manga way of animation but with a little bit more texture to it but it, it worked out and i really enjoyed that yeah so on to my number one yep all right um uh, i mean we've touched on this so <laughs> but the feelings in this episode like you know the flashback with mark playing the baseball game mm -hmm. That we were just talking about the flashback with Mark hearing his dad's words from like the first episode where he's going to start training him. But then the images are all of 
the fight between him and his dad Mm -hmm. and all of the beating and death that was there. Like that was just so incredibly powerful. And the, you know, I'll have you dad, like just the, the feels, the feels in this episode were pretty strong and holding the woman's arm, not just that holding the woman's arm, like he tried to save her. All he's got left is this arm. And then they kept the arm in the foreground of the next shot yes, just to keep, I mean, they just kept drilling you with how heavy all of it was. And it it was so effective. Yeah. Well, my number one, well, it's kind of long and drawn, but I'll try to make it as brief as possible (laughs) because we, mine was longer, but we touched on almost all of it. So I wasn't going to repeat. It's pretty much the (laughs) same stuff that we went over, but you already mentioned it. The new guardians helping out and saving the people. Then we see them in the new headquarters, that whole little scene with Rex we see them come together as a team. That that was something that I really enjoyed. That was awesome. And then we get a montage of the team training, as you stated. Uh, we see others going back to some kind of normal. Amber, Eve, William, and Debbie dealing with Mark being out of it throughout that whole time. And Mark healing. And it's we find out it's like two weeks later, too. And William and Eve finding out that they both know Mark is invincible. And finding out Amber realizes that. And then Eve tells Amber, well, I'm Adam Eve. Oh, you're the one who duplicates herself. No, no. I'm not. I know, poor Eve. I think it was, uh, no, was it William? I think that states that. Yeah, it was William who said it. And then. But uh, Amber kind of brushes it off like, oh, okay. Like, I'm the pink one. Oh, of course you are. And they're all like, I don't know who the pink one is. Exactly. (laughs) Uh, Mark comes to Cecil and has a talk with Mark about Nolan. He tells Mark that Debbie heard everything that really hurt Mark about their whole conversation as they were battling, and Mark didn't feel good about it at all. And then Cecil shows him this specific room that is covered by light that nobody else could see on Earth, unless they allow them to see it. But within that, we see a bunch of testing of rocks and for lasers and things of that nature. And then we see Immortal being put back together like yeah. they're gonna reanimate him in some way dude that frequency room and i like how they blamed it on the water we all drink it's making us not see the frequencies yeah uh, get all the conspiracy theorists out there to be right? like oh don't drink the water now the government's gonna like, do something <laughs> now in reality there's a lot of people who are on well water that it wouldn't be affecting but whatever i like the idea yeah <laughs> But I just love the idea of we actually see this secret room, and at least Cecil was able to give Mark a view of that, because he wants to be Mark on board of, like, taking care of the Earth. Absolutely. Then we finally see the Auditor of Planets come back to warn Mark. He goes, I I, I told my bosses about, uh, I thought I was going back to Earth, and I told them about Earth, and we weren't supposed to talk to you, but I found out, and then, yeah... <laughs> you know, then there, I had to warn you about there being a Viltrumite being on Earth. And Mark's just like, yeah. Yeah, about that. And then they have this heart-to-heart, and you find out that the Auditor himself, his planet got destroyed. And then they had to do breeding communities to <sighs> replenish his, his race. Yeah. And I guess, you know, now that Earth's part of this coalition of planets, now that they're aware of it, and at least now Mark is a representation of Earth within it, no more testing so he doesn't have to battle his friend, his one-eyed friend, every time. (laughs) But the one thing that I took away from that is the auditor mentions that when he went back to the coalition of planets to let him know, he has to let them know, but they've never heard of a Viltrumite abandoning their post before. Yeah. So this is that, a first. So this shows uh, that obviously Mark hit a chord with Nolan, and that's why Nolan took off. Where Nolan went, I want to see next season when this comes out, because we have to know. I have a... This sneaking sp- suspicion that we're just going to get whole another version of Mark's story, and then we'll get maybe a few instances of where we see Nolan at. Nolan's not going to be the center of right. the show at I this agree. point. He'll be something that they're going to throw in probably for the third season when he comes back. I don't think we're going to see him in the second season. No, I think we've got enough story even started that we can get through a whole nother season without Nolan or now. I mean, it was one of my notes, but with, um, I think the guy, the alien's name is Alan. Yes. With him saying, you know, we've never seen one leave his post. We don't know what's going to, like, what is going to happen? Is Viltrum, I going to just Nolan- go attack it? 
Because are they? Yeah. Are they going to come? Are they going to come attack Earth? Are they going to send somebody new? Are they going to kill Nolan? Like, yeah, good questions. We don't know. Nobody knows the answer because it's never happened. Yeah, so exactly. I guess we'll all have to find out together. Yeah, season two, which we don't know when, but when Robert Kirkman and uh, Stephen Yun had that little video teaser, that was so cute. it was so cute to see. So you guys have to watch it. It's like, what? Two more years. How are we going to do this? <laughs> but it's going to be pretty cool. Last one for me would be the montage at the end of all possible villains that we saw that you brought up. Yeah. But the fact that we get to see the Muller twins being taken away and being captured, that was pretty cool. They seemed to know it was coming because they started burning the place down. Yeah. So that nobody else could get their technology. Yeah, I think they thought that robot turned them in or something. <laughs> well, he was planning on it, I'm sure. Yeah. Just, other things came up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that was our top five of this episode, this finale. So you already mentioned you had some notes that you mentioned, but I, you have more. Yeah, yeah. Um, the title card, totally covered in blood now almost. Yeah. I, I liked how they kept making it worse and worse, again, like The Walking Dead. Hopefully they reset it like The Walking Dead. Yeah, I, I'm hoping they reset it for next season. Yeah. It was just a stupid little thing, but the fact uh, when they had Mark get out of bed and the hospital gown was open in the back, I don't know why, but it just made me chuckle. <laughs> <laughs> but nobody wants that. <laughs> you can see my butt. He had a cute art. He had a cute cartoon butt. Yeah, there you um, go. <laughs> he was in uh, Oh, yeah. He works now. Debbie. <laughs> yeah, without trying. I think it might be. I might be. I think it might be good genetics on his part. Yeah. I love that Debbie has the tailor to talk to. So she's not alone. Yeah. Because when, you know, they showed her crying hysterically in the bedroom because she she obviously doesn't feel comfortable enough talking to her son. And I get that. You don't want to burden your child. Well, but I'm glad she has somebody. Well, who's she going to really talk to about this? Cecil? She really doesn't like Cecil. No. And was it Art? I think his name was. I think it's Art. Yeah. yeah. I. He's the only other person that she knows that knows of everything that's going on that she could talk to. At least she's, you know, he's got a drinking buddy at least. And they both could yeah. talk about this together. I think they need each other, and I'm glad they have each other. Mm. I'm excited Amber and Mark are back together. Mm, which might be a little bit because we saw in that montage her father. Yeah, we'll see what <laughs> happens with that. But right now, I'm just happy they're back together. Mm. I like them together. They're cute. And then we covered everything else. Uh, my notes have pretty much been talked about. Yeah, that's pretty much it. We already went everything within my notes as we went on. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll just move right into quotes. So what do you got? I got the, we haven't earned it yet with the Black Samson when they were washing, when Rex was washing the blood away. Like that was powerful. Yeah. Omni-Man, you are a vulture mite in blood only. Your training starts now. Like we've just been goofing around. This is for real. Like that was. Yeah. It was kind of forceful though. But that was yeah, no, with was, the circumstances at that point. And yeah, it was menacing. I liked it. It was kind of like a testing of him if he's worthy of being, quote unquote, a Viltramite. Right. And then the last one was Debbie. Our children remind us of the joys in life. They show us what it's all about. This is humanity. Mm, that's a good one. Yeah. And it's totally true. Like watching your child get excited about something is such an amazing feeling well I'll, the first few i have are from nolan himself so first one which is very hard to hear and him saying i do love your mother but she's more like a pet to me <sighs> but this is what really sets mark off on his rage yeah and I, without that we wouldn't have the these scenes that we have the next one from nolan again these people are meaningless they are cavemen without us so that's really the thought of how Viltrumites look at people who don't have powers or anything like that. They're not strong enough that he even states that they're destroying their own earth and they destroy themselves, which is true. We do. Yeah. And the last one from Nolan saying, do you really want this? I can wait 17 years again. I can make another kid. And this is as he's pummeling Mark and it was so hard to hear and to see. But yeah. to, it, it was really meant to break Mark's will, if you think, not of his body and form, but to have him conform to what Nolan wanted. But the thought of, like, well, I'll just get make another one. 
But I don't think yeah. deep down Nolan th- really thought of that. It was just out of rage. And then the next one would be, of course, from Mark saying, you, Dad, I'll still have you. And that's after Anu Man asks him what he will do or have after 500 years and everyone else is gone. And that that's was... really sparks off where Nolan, you start to see the humanity within Nolan and then he has to fly off. Absolutely. And the last one, which is pretty cute, and this is from William, and he says, well, we can try, but it's literally what everyone is talking about in the whole world, and that's after Mark states, can we talk <laughs> about something else? But it's like, That was so funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that was hilarious. I love William. I, I think, I'm just glad that they kept around. They didn't kill him off. <laughs> oh, yeah. And Eve made it through. Remember how we were talking? We were sure she was going to get killed? Uh, or that's her? true. Yeah. She made it through at least season one. That was exciting. Yes. <laughs> I have a funny feeling that might be a little bit of an issue later on in season. Uh, Eve and Mark mm. might, might get together. Who knows? But that's my theory. <laughs> <laughs> they might. They might. All right. So with that, that was our coverage so far, but we got some feedback and uh, we got some feedback from Chris again. So do you want to take that away? Sure. This episode of Invincible was crazy. First and foremost, I called it about Omni-Man's true intentions way back in episode one after he slaughtered the original Guardians. The death toll between Mark and his dad's fight was staggering, just to prove a point that human lives don't matter in the grand scheme of things. Probably my favorite part of that fight was the train scene. Just the way everyone got ripped apart was just gory as hell. I'm glad Mark finally took a stand for himself as a superhero and fought against his dad. But still, like with most fights, he was beaten to a bloody pulp. But I'm sure that we all saw that outcome coming regardless against his dad. I feel Omni-Man on some level at the end of the fight before flying off regretted beating his son to a bloody pulp at the very least. I'm glad the Guardians knew their place in the fight and realized they couldn't do anything but get in the way between Mark and his dad's fight, but said fuck orders and went to help with the wounded at the very least. Hmm. William, as always, was a treasure in this episode with his reactions and what he had to say. (laughs) Still one of my favorites. Yeah. I'm glad Amber realized what type of pressure Mark had been under with everything and that they are kind of, and that they're kind of getting or rather back together. Can't wait to see how season two plays out at this point. The practically incompetent Cyclops come coming back to warn Mark about the <laughs> Viltrumites was a great, was great as well. This should be an interesting story thread to unfold. Love the last bit of montage that was in the episode. And the main thing was the small army of cyber of Cybermen that they have built for the impending invasion, which has to be coming. Yeah. I believe that too, because they, they set their sights on it. They set right. their sights on it and it was like emphatic. So, you know, it's coming. Yeah, that's definitely coming. I, I know you talk about the practically incompetent Cyclops, Alan, Chris, but I do like Alan. I love that I character. Like Alan. You know, Seth yeah. Rogen makes it as, as goofy as the character is. I enjoy it. I want to see more of him, but that's just me. And good on him for coming over to help Mark. Exactly. He was... You know, Mark's got a lot of people who like him. I, well, the thing was, is that I, Mark made an impression on Alan at that point when he goes, oh, okay. And then Alan does the same thing to... Mark does the same thing to Alan that Alan did to him when they were on the moon that one time. He pulls up yeah. a rock for Alan to sit down to talk to him about it. Whereas Alan before did that to Mark to explain things. <laughs> that was so cool. cute. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Chris, for that uh, feedback. Really, We really appreciate it. And with that, we'll just move right into a voice feedback. And we all know who this is. Steve. Yep. Mr. Steve Brown. Hey, Mark and Jamie, it's Steve, and I'm watching Invincible, the season finale for the second time. And, man, there's so much blood in this beginning with Mark fighting and uh, and his dad and Omni-Man showing how menace. Oh, such a good beginning. Can't wait to to watch the rest of it again. So much coming out in this episode. that it's. I can't wait to hear you guys talk about it because it's just, oh, this stuff with Omni-Man and trying to convince Mark that people aren't worth it and oh just heartbreaking it with his mom and everything really seeing the power of omni-man in this in this fight as well and just how ineffectual mark is i mean now his punches are causing natural disasters hey his teeth grew back 
I love some of the little touches, like in the background when he brings Mark home, you can see across the street the, the fence up around where the other house was, and a little porta potty there for, like, I guess the workers or something. <laughs> I'm the pink one. Oh, right. Of course. I love that montage at the end of all the things uh, we have set up for future seasons, which I'm sure you guys will have it in the news that you've seen that uh, Kirkman and Stephen Yeun have, have announced that uh, Amazon Prime has picked them up for not just season two, but season three as well. So we know we're going to at least get two more seasons of this. So uh, thanks, guys, for doing this podcast. It's, it was great to have a little break, but I loved sending in your voice, the voicemails each week. All right. Uh, talk to you later. Yay, Steve. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think his teeth grew back. I think they had to put something in. Um, I don't know. He he can heal himself. That is true. Be interesting. They probably did grow back. I wonder, I wonder if they'll cool get power. into that. Oh, yeah, that would be great power. I know some of us <laughs> want that. Get rid of these crappy teeth we got. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. No more cavities. Just pull the tooth out. Let a new one grow in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you, Steve, for uh, sending that one in. That's awesome. Eventually, we will be coming back. Obviously, there's going to be a uh, hiatus for us between this and Loki coming out on Disney+. Plus. But we will probably pepper in like a couple of episodes before then about maybe a movie that we haven't covered before. So keep in touch with that with our Facebook group, and we'll go into that later. But right now, we're just going to go right into news. And Steve had already mentioned it. I have mentioned it. <laughs> Jamie has mentioned, I've mentioned it. it. <laughs> so obviously, yeah, Robert Kirkman and Steven Yeun have announced with a, I think it was a Twitter feed video that they launched. And it was uh, Robert, you know, doing his sarcastic, I hope I'm not bothering you. And them going into it and him saying, yeah, we're picked up for two more seasons. So we got two seasons two and season three, which is amazing. So you know, they have job security now. You got <laughs> Gillian Jacobs. You got you got Stephen Young. You got all these uh, voice actors now that have uh, some sort of job security. And it's great. And I'm glad. And they can continue the story of Invincible. And I'm eager to uh, hear it and see it on Amazon and cover it later on when it does come out. So thank you guys for uh, pushing that. We got it at the right time at the very end of the season, which is awesome. Yeah, and you know what? The way they did the season finale, even if that was the end, it was still kind of a satisfying end. Yes, like the way they wrote that without knowing they were getting a second season, I thought was well done. I they, I don't think they knew until yeah. they got feedback of how the show is doing with uh, within Prime the reviews. Probably people who review it on YouTube and podcasters like us, and they probably saw the praising of this. And, you know, the internet's going wild with the comparisons <laughs> of the boys as well as within Invincible, which is very similar, but I've said it before, but I'll say it again. If they try to do this show as a movie like they originally intended, the budget would have been so huge and phenomenal. So them yeah. creating it as an anime series makes more sense and they could do a lot more. And we, you've already mentioned it about not telling a person, oh, watch this, show your kid. No, this is not a <laughs> show for kids in animation form. Yeah. Neither is the comic in any way either. The way Robert actually writes his comics is very adult themed. So absolutely take that with a grain of salt and do not pass it to your children. If you feel they're more <laughs> mature enough to read that content, there's a lot more within the comics. So if you're really amazed at the show and what it presented, I highly recommend that you go out there and read it. There's tons of volumes. Start with the first one. A lot of them are selling out in comics. I, I believe the trade has been selling and it's the top trade at this time right now. So and Amazon had the trade for free on Kindle for a little while. I don't know if it's still there, oh. but they did have like, if you just want to like dip your toe into it. Exactly. So if that's still available, try it. If not, if you're trying to look for a physical one, you might have to badger your comic shop, your local comic shop, if they're still around, or if not, you could go on Amazon prime or, and just purchase the trade that's there but those trades are going up in as far as demand so a lot of people are looking to buy so it's right now it's the highly demanded trade you know comic book that's out there right now so try your hand at it and go from there i highly recommend it am i going to be running out there i don't think so because i'm taking the show as it is i have yeah. like the first 
trade of it from years ago. And then I have the last, I believe, 10 issues of Invincible in comic form because I knew the, the run was ending. But I just kept them on a collector standpoint. So if somebody really wanted to buy the last, you know, issue, they can buy it from me. Did I read it? No, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I the storytelling is good. I love the way Kirkman tells a story. But the art, I just couldn't get into the artwork. A lot of people are that. like that. Yeah, I agree with it, too. Yeah, it was hard to look at it when I first saw it. I'm like, eh, it's not my cup of tea, but the animation was, so it worked out. Yeah. Nonetheless. All right. Well, with that, we're going to just move right into podcast recommendations. Been into this podcast called Lore, which is um, kind of true stories. They've got They've got a huge library, but they'll do stuff from werewolves to sometimes just kings and queens and it's always a little bit on the macabre side mm. but it's a lighter macabre like you can listen to it with your kids oh okay and there's no cursing there's no yeah, adult there's no, content in it and it's not super scary and they always do the historical stuff and you know they'll go through and they'll tell you the ghost story like you know they'll tell you sometimes if if it's applicable you know it'll tell you the ghost story and the scary stuff and then they'll be like but there's really no evidence of this actually happening <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's good. At least they leave that and the yeah. kid will listen to it. Oh, really? There's no... All right. So it's not real. Okay, mom. Yeah. Dad, thanks. <laughs> yeah. So lore is pretty good. And if you like it, they've got some longer form podcasts and some shorter form podcasts of, under with the same type of, you know, light macabre. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, with mine, uh, well, we have to plug our friend Damien and he has his podcast coming out. And it's called Watched It in the 80s. Right now, I'm excited about this. Yeah, there's no affiliation right now to any network. Uh, I might ask him if he wants to be on Pyrocore Entertainment, but I'm not sure where he's at. I haven't talked to him in a while. But he does have a promo up, and it's pretty, really, I, I thought it was really, really cool. It was really awesome. You know, it was the traits of a true podcaster, and I just loved how he presented it. So he has that promo up. It's It can be found on Spotify and Stitcher for now. Eventually, it's growing. It should be up on iTunes, Google Play, and all the other apps of choice that you use for <laughs> podcasting listening. So the actual podcast is about anything that's within the 80s between film or TV. So he might do a specific uh, episode about, you know just the 10 of us from the 80s or he'll talk about we i've already done it on adrenaline cinema we did red dawn but you'll have his take and version of it and what his thoughts are he'll have probably a little bit more information than what i usually bring up generally in adrenaline i usually just bring up our favorite thoughts about the movie unknown aspects of the movie things that we didn't know people may you may have known but everybody has their own different view of how to do podcasting so i highly recommend watched in the 80s with damien vitale and uh just look for it on spotify and stitcher right now subscribe if you're interested give it a try and if there's a rating or review please give a rating or review if you can and onward to YouTube recommendations. So you got one, Jamie. Yeah, uh, Chris, who was kind enough to write in every week. He has a YouTube channel. He's uh, a, He does some video work and video editing. So if you are interested in that kind of thing, he's got some cool stuff up on his site. Some scary stories and some uh, just cool images. And he put together a, you know one of those funny trailers where Predator is a love story. Um, but it's Chris Gertlinger's motion picture art, and just check it out. Cool. He does anything you like and you want some help, just message him and... Yep. Awesome. Likes keeping busy. Yeah. He needs jobs like everybody else does. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and mine would be the Grim Life Collective. You all have heard this before, our friends, the Grim Life Collective, with with Michael and Jessica. And he, Michael has been going out lately and following the Kurt Cobain sites that are available out in california his old house that was in california where they were Ooh. kicked out of they were, uh the site of where they filmed the video smells like teen spirit things of that nature uh, he had a friend that came down from canada who also does a youtube and a podcast they just went out and ventured out so i highly recommend you check that out so michael's been around town in la since they moved out so he's been concentrating more on his youtube channel and i highly recommend that so keep in mind the grim life collective on youtube 
definitely gonna have to check out the Kurt Cobain stuff. Big Nirvana fan. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool and interesting what they were able to. There was the house was abandoned in California, and him and his friend were able to go inside. Oh wow! Yeah, so and he was able to line up shots that you saw with him pictures of Kurt. Oh. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. The fact that it was like a two point three million dollar home, but it was abandoned, and it's kind of scary to see something like that that was yeah left in uncared for all this time the fact that they were able to get in there was interesting too so with that well a lot of people want to know how to submit some sort of feedback well you could just go to our facebook page which would be facebook.com slash panels to pixels every week i leave an image of what we're going to be covering if it's an episode of a show we'll be posting a picture and telling you to leave a comment down below which we will read so i suggest going to that you could go to our, our website which is panels to pixels podcast.com but that just redirects you to our facebook page so <laughs> keep that in mind but like i said just leave the comments down below the image and we will read them and it's a good way to get in touch with us you can message us through in the messenger or you could just email us at panels to pixels one at gmail.com. So that's panels two is spelled out T O and pixels and the number one at gmail.com. With that, you could easily just send in some sort of written text form of your feedback. We'll read that as well. Or if not, you could do what Steve did, which is email us saying, here's my audio feedback, record yourself and add it as an attachment and we will play it like we did. So with that, do that if you can. If not, then just listen to us as you always have been. <laughs> and we're... Whatever's easiest for you. Exactly. <laughs> and where can we be heard? Well, I've already said this. Obviously, you're hearing us. So you're hearing us on one of the various apps that you've gotten us on. But we could be heard on Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcast, and Amazon. So if you have a friend that has not listened to us, please... Word of mouth is the best way to get us noticed and p make people aware of it. We do appreciate it. We also appreciate, like I stated before, if there's a review or rating on any of the podcast apps that are out there that we're on, we'd really highly appreciate it. And we'll thank you if we see it. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I haven't checked in a long time. I'm pretty sure people have sent in some things. But we could also be found on YouTube. That's another way of listening to us or seeing us. A lot of people like using YouTube to listen to our podcasts. Me, it's just a straight image of the logo that we have on YouTube. And it's just the audio of us doing this particular podcast. So you subscribe to us on YouTube. Give us a thumbs up if you really like the episode. And you could leave a comment down there below as well. Uh, I actually got a comment on my one-on-one uh, -on -one through GalaxyCon with John Bernthal recently. And I, nice. And the lady was asking me, well, it sounded to me and looked to me that they just cut you off. And they did. Just to give you a little information, a lot of these cons out there only give you two minutes of time with the... Uh, the celebrity. John actually did add a few seconds more. You could add 30 seconds and whatever. I think he maybe added two 30 second extensions because he really wanted to talk. But there's only so much that they could do and then you get cut off because if there's a lot of people in a waiting room, then they got to move on and get you going. I noticed that Makes it sense. was strictly two minutes by the time because I was. you could see there's a person ahead of you and then they'd cut you off and then they go on to the next one. But you know, it, it's how those cons are laid out, and I understand it. I do endorse the idea of Galaxy Con, Wizard World Con, Virtual. Uh, Wizard World is pretty cool because they have a lot of things that you could add on as you're in the waiting list or the waiting room to your uh, purchases, as well as they actually interact with you. Same thing with Galaxy Con, they'll just jump in and it's like a Zoom call and they'll they'll interact with you. You might have to watch a bunch of trailers while you wait, but it's fun. So I highly recommend that. So that's a little add on. I just want to throw at the very end. And where can listeners hear us? Well, Jamie, you were heard here. And still only here. Eh, well, we'll see if that changes. There, there's prospects <laughs> out there and I'm pretty sure. There's prospects. Like I said, you're more, always more than welcome to be on Adrenaline Cinema. So if there's something, a movie you already mentioned, you have to think of something. There's always time yeah. to do that. So, and like I mentioned, I'm on Adrenaline Cinema podcast at, on the Pyrocore Entertainment Network. So with that, 
that particular podcast, if you're not aware of it, I cover action movies, fantasy movies, adventure films, thrillers, suspense, all those weird films that get your adrenaline going. So you could check me out there. You just got to go to the PyrocoreEntertainment.com website. You could see myself on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast. You could see Daphne and Paik on Run For Your Lives. You could catch their feed. So, And as well as the uh, person who created the artwork for this particular podcast, as well as Pyrocore Entertainment. There's a link there for our artist, and that would be Kirk Manley. So you could check out his links if you like his artwork and you could He does amazing work. Yeah, and you could actually purchase some of his artwork through his site. So that'll link you to there. So I highly recommend that. That's another plug out there for you. So with that, you could listen to me here right here, as always, on Panels to Pixels Podcast on the Next Level Network. And I highly recommend that everybody check out everything that's on the Next Level Network, especially Lost We Have to Go Back with Ben and Kristen. And that's a dual thing between Podcasts and Next Level. But also there is the Spotlight, which Ben is still working on. He's going to have p celebrities come in on that. And his new podcast, which should be in production this week and recording, and he'll get those out within the next two weeks. There's a high likelihood I might end up on that one. <laughs> exactly. As well as myself. So yeah, you, I think we might be doing one together. <laughs> exactly. So you check that out, and that's the Wilhelm screen. And uh, if you want to hear more of th about that on Adrenaline Cinema, because Ben's been my guest at least four or five times now. So he's the uh, mainstay on that. He enjoys it and we have fun together. I think we have a lot of laughs while we do mine. <laughs> you two you two work well off each other. You two are really f a lot of fun to listen to together. Yeah, it's fun to do that with him because we just goof around and have fun with it. And that's the whole point of this. But... You know, you get a laugh. So there's a lot of tangents, by the way, so <laughs> keep that in mind. But at the very end, you'll hear where his connections are and what he's doing with Wilhelm. So keep in mind, check that out. Adrenaline Cinema Podcast on the Pyrocore Entertainment Network and everything else that's going on here on the Next Level Network as well. So, well, that's pretty much our show. And I just want to thank everyone for listening. I'm Mark. Thank you. I'm Jamie. And this was Panels to Pixels, and we'll see you on the next panel. Goodbye, everybody.